everyone, this is Becca from Becca's Music Room. I'm a music teacher who talks about teacher tips, teacher life, teacherpreneurs, and all things that might hopefully make your life just a little bit easier. Today I'm here to talk about all of the lessons that I am teaching from like mid-September to mid-October, which is perfect because my rotations worked out perfectly with Hispanic Heritage Month. So the main theme for all of these lessons is going to be Hispanic Heritage Month lessons. There's also other things thrown in there as well, but that's kind of like the overarching what's going on. If you like this video, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share so other music teachers can find it as well. I do want to put the little caveat of I am trying something new, so I'm going to try to do some screen recordings of like the PowerPoints I'm using so that I can lay them over here and show you as I'm going through them. And I really want to talk about things like what I'm assessing what I'm differentiating and also um, just exactly like how I'm explaining things or transitions because those are things that are easy to say like, oh, you need good transitions, but it's hard to actually be like, but what does that look like? So not all of my things have the greatest transition, but we're gonna try. So those are things I'm gonna point out all throughout the lessons. I'm gonna start at the top with fourth and fifth grade and work my way down. So if you've been watching for a while, you know that I link fourth and fifth grade together. They are doing the same activities. However, this time is actually a little bit different. So fourth and fifth grade, our main goal is the treble clef. So my fourth graders have, for the most part, never done treble clef activities. My fifth graders have done treble clef. Even my students from other schools have done them as well. So they are reviewing that, but we're also talking about the dotted quarter eighth note rhythm since they already know the treble clef. That's like our new thing that we're introducing. So on Monday, which is actually today, which is why I look like such a hot mess, um, we started out with a part of La Raspa, which is a like the Mexican hat dance is what it's also called. And we learn just the eight section. So I brought them in, told them we were gonna learn about Hispanic music because it's Hispanic Heritage Month. And we listened to the song first and showed the form on our hands. So we did A, B, A, C, a, and that's sign language for each of those letters so that we knew it a little bit ahead of time. We could just like listen first. And then we learned just the A section. Um, there's lots of different versions out there. The one that I do, um, you put your hands behind your back and you do like one foot up, other foot up, one foot up, and then two claps for the A section. And I'll tell you what we do for the rest. I've seen at least three versions on Instagram in the last week. So if that's not what you do, no stressor. After that, I tell the kids, Awesome, you did such a great job. Now we're gonna move on to a Hispanic song and we learned the words to Al Citron. So if you don't know that song, um, it goes, it's a Mexican folk song and it has a cut passing game that goes along with it. I'm actually writing a blog post all about it so you should be able to see it very soon. Al Citron de un fandango sango sango sabare sabare de la rondela con su triqui triqui tron. And this is a nonsense song. So uh, al citron means the citron, which is like a lemon, um, like fruit. And the rest of it really doesn't mean anything. I mean, there's a couple words that mean, you know, like and, but not really anything particular. So I tell them like, it's even if you don't know, it, it's great because none of these words are even real words. So it doesn't matter. Um, after that, I tell the students like, you know, I've actually been to Mexico. And when I was in Mexico, you know what was really annoying? <laughs> Everywhere you went, there were people with like booths and stands selling all these things like tacos and churros, which are delicious, or, you know, little handcrafts and different things. Um, just like if you go to the mall and the people are like, have the perfume and they're trying to get you to buy and so they yell things out at you. And then I tell them, oh, you know, I know another song that does that same thing, but in a different country. This one's in English. Um, and that song, if you haven't figured out, is called Chairs to Mend. So this is an English street cry song and it is again about the street cries that you might hear in England and so it goes let me find it so chairs to mend old chairs to mend mackerel fresh mackerel any old rags any old rags um so the way that we learned this is we just I had them repeat the words like twice and then I sang and pointed to it and then the second time they were able to sing it with me both fourth and fifth grade um and then we talked about how we have talked a lot about the rhythm but now we're going to talk about the melody and so I said you know okay this is the staff <laughs> it's pretty much like a map that's how I like to explain it. it's like a map if it's up high was it going to sound high or low and they're like high 
great. If something's down low, is it gonna sound higher low? Low, oh great. And so I kind of point to some of the notes on there and I show like, okay, this one's really low, so it's gonna sound low. This one's really high, so it's gonna sound high. And talk about, you know, the contour and like, even if you don't know what this is, like you can still see if it's high or low, which is really helpful. Um, and then I have a little PowerPoint that I'm gonna jump to. And so it says, this is the musical staff. It shows us how high or low something is. On the staff, there are five lines and four stasis. I have them take out their hands and we say, all right, you have one, two, three, four, five fingers starting from the bottom, just like the musical staff. In between your hand, in between your fingers are spaces. Those spaces, there's one, two, three, four of them. Your staff, your hand is just like the staff. It's very helpful. If you ever forget, it's right there for you. Um, and then I ask them about the note that's on this treble clef and I ask them like what if that is on a line or on a space and they're like, oh, it's on a space because it's in between. Um, I don't know why this moved down. It does not look like that in my classroom. That's weird. Anyway, um, so then I tell them what if a note's on a line, the line goes straight through it and we count one, two, three, four, five. Emphasis on the going up. And then if a note is on a space, then it is in between the lines. And I make a really big deal about that because that is a struggle later on. Um, and then I show them this one and we go over this chant. I, I, I'm not sure where this came from. I got it from my, um, I got it from my mentor teacher during student teaching. I think it's from game plan, but I'm not sure. So if this is trademarked, I apologize, but it says, um, EGBDF, EGBDF, those are the lines of the treble clef. Spaces fell face, spaces fell face, F A C E, spaces fell face. So we just go over the lines today, especially with fourth grade, because they've never seen this before. With fifth grade, we do go through spaces fell face because they've seen it before. And then I tell them there's lots of different ways you can remember. Sometimes we use something called an acronym. So I talk about what an acronym is. An acronym is when you have like a sentence sometimes they're really silly that helps you remember what something is because each word of the sentence starts with that letter and then we do this little activity where they all oh my nails are bad sorry friends um where they have to write an acronym to go with it and then they draw a picture now writing in general is a struggle for my students so this is really hard for some reason so what I have found is I you know I gave them lots of examples and talked about you know make sure it makes sense and all that kind of stuff and then I wrote on the board every good boy does fine and I say if you have no idea what to do if you can't think of anything write this down and then erase one of the words and switch it to something else because I would I want them to come up with their own but y'all I tried this before and I got like all sorts of craziness. So I got all sorts of really interesting ones. I might post on Instagram some of my really interesting ones. So stay tuned for that because some of my kids are really creative and got that really well. Um, and that's it for Monday. Then some of us share our activities. On Tuesday, we come in and we go over chairs to mend. And then after that, we sing it as a round, which of course is always a struggle, but it's always fun. Every once in a while, they'll surprise me. Um, then we look at the notes on the treble clef and I like put up just the sheet music for it. And we talk about the different notes on there and I'll see if they can figure out what the notes are, especially in fifth grade. Um, in fourth grade, we go over the F-A-C-E, spaces spell face. And then I project the whole treble clef with all the notes on it and say, you know, of course you could always memorize where one is and then count from there. Um, and then we have two different things. Ideally these would be going on at the same time, but last week I did not do that. Um, basically two activities, half the class is playing Battleship, the other class is on the keyboard. So for Battleship, I have a whole blog post about this, so I'm not gonna go super in depth. Basically everyone gets a file. It has two treble clefs. One says yours, one says theirs. So this is where they put three battleships on there. We just use Expo markers. Mm -hmm. And then on here, they record their guesses from their partner. So, and they play, you know, do you have, um, like, do you have one on E? Miss, all right, or yes, you sunk my battleship. And then they keep track. Once they find all of the other person's battleships, then that person wins and I'll link my blog post down below so you can read all in depth about that because it's super fun. They love it. You can also do it if you only know lines or only know spaces or even just numbers. You know, you can say the fourth line, third line. I've done that as well too.
On the keyboards, we are doing Little Kids Rock. So we're doing jam along songs. So we're listening to songs and playing keyboards along with it. We're using these little chord charts. So they are showing us, okay, um, the root, the third, and the fifth, and you can move them around the keyboard. Um, side note, I got these two mini keyboards and they have changed my life. Um, they're actually battery operated. I don't have any batteries, so I haven't been able to do that. But I have been able to show the kids this and say, okay, you know, here's a group of three black keys. Here's a group of two, the one, and we can actually talk and I can show them the thing and I can like stick this in here. Um, they actually have these chord charts on Little Kids Rock for this size keyboard, but I didn't print any out. And I'll put it in, show them, okay, I'm looking for this red one where it says one, that's the note I'm pressing. So I'm gonna press this note down. And just being able to show them like this is a keyboard and really show them before they get over there has really helped. Cause it's hard, you know, I mean, I can show it to them as they're sitting, but it's like flat so they can't all see. And it's just, it's hard. So this has been really, really, truly helpful. Like more helpful than I thought it would be, which is very exciting. Um, so over there, we are working on identifying groups of two and groups of three black keys to help us figure out the letters later on once we get there. And then we're doing a um, two jam alongs. So we're doing um, Land of a Thousand Dances. And then at the end, hopefully bring everyone together and do jam along to Low Rider. And those are both songs that only have one chord, which is why I picked them because it's only one chord. Now, last week we did everyone played Battleship and then everyone played the keyboards at the same time because again, I just didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel like they understood well enough to just leave them playing the game while I was over working with the keyboard kids. So we'll see how tomorrow goes. I haven't quite decided what we're gonna do there. On Wednesday, we have centers, which is always super fun. So we're just reviewing our EGBDF and FACE. We're just reviewing all the notes on the treble clef first off and then going to the centers. So I always do three centers, but six groups. I have a whole blog post about that too, if you're curious. If you have any centers questions, please leave them down below because I love centers. They're difficult, but I love them. Um, so three different things they're doing um, at the keyboards. We are working on, depending on the level of the students, because this is a differentiated activity that I differentiate based on what I have seen on their treble clef activities and also on their keyboard skills from the day before. Um, and we, so first we just find groups of two and groups of three, and then I introduce the concept of um, the letter D. So I always pick D to teach them first because I say the two black keys make a doghouse and D is in the doghouse and we can find everything from there. Now I just find that super easy. My brother told me that when I was in like kindergarten taking piano lessons and I have never forgotten. So I think that's really helpful. So we do that and we just go over that with my fifth graders. I didn't have a new fifth grade last week. So with my fifth graders this week, my goal is for students who have been to music before, have done keyboards before, to have little cards. Oh, I don't have them. Um, with rhythms. They're actually my kaboom cards with the level two rhythms with the dotted quarter note and eighth note rhythms. Um, and they have letters on them. And so they find that letter and then play them. So that's my goal for them. Then we're playing Go Fish. So everyone probably knows how to play Go Fish, but this is Treble Clef Go Fish. I'm not gonna explain Go Fish because I hope you know that. Um, so this is available in my TBT shop in Treble Clef and Level 1 Rhythms, which are Ta TT and Quarter Note Rest, and I will have more later as we go. That's one of my goals soon. And then the third thing is coloring by Treble Clef Note. So, let's see. I have, so, I, this is also available on TPT. I think I have five different coloring sheets, but I only print out three for my kids. And I told them they could pick any of the three ones. I didn't care which one they did. And basically it has a key and then they figure out what letter the key says. So like brown is on F. So anywhere they see F, they color that section brown. And this I'm actually collecting as a quiz grade to see like who is understanding and who is totally lost. And I'm not gonna lie, my fourth graders last week were dismal. My biggest concern was that they weren't working quickly enough. And so they like would color in one part and I'm like, 
you had five minutes like what were you doing and there was a parent next to them so I don't I really don't know what they were doing um but we're gonna have a chit chat with my kids this week before that so that's really fun you know it's I can use it as an assessment but it's not like this is an assessment um yeah so that is Wednesday on Thursday, we finished learning the B and C sections to La Raspa. So on for the version I'm doing on the B section, I have them walk in a circle around and the B section plays twice. So we go around and then we switch, goes back to A and then goes to C. Now, um, C, ideally you would link arms and you know do the little twirly thing with your partner. On Friday, we do the dance straight through because they've learned the whole thing, so we're just going straight through. And then I have a little mariachi music PowerPoint that I show them. I saved it on my school computer though, so I don't have it with me right now, so I can't show you. Um, and then we watch some really quick videos of some Hispanic dancing. We look at all the different instruments from mariachi music. And we talk about all the stuff we've learned about Hispanic music. And I have the kids write down five things that they learned about Hispanic music. So it could be words they learned, it could be countries we talked about, it could be instruments they heard of, whatever, I don't care, just five things, focusing on ideas for writing, just coming up with as many ideas as we can. Um, and when that is done, hopefully it will be time for a game. So Friday's our game time if we earn our points. If we have to earn 20 points, we earn like five every day, hopefully 20 by Friday, and then we get to play a game. They are going to pick their own game because they're in fifth grade, so that's how I do that. And they will usually work pretty hard to get to pick their own game for a little while. All right, so there's fourth and fifth grade, only 20 minutes in. I don't know how that always happens. Third grade, we're moving on. All right, so with third grade, we have a couple different focuses. I'm looking at 16th notes. We kind of talked about them last time. We're diving really deep into them now and talking about measures and meter and time signatures. So those are our main overarching goals. We're also looking at half rests as well. So we're also starting with the Mexican hat dance, the form and then the dance. Um, and then we learn the song Chicken on a Fence Post, which goes, Chicken on a fence post, can't dance, Josie. Chicken on a fence post, can't dance, Josie. Chicken on a fence post, can't dance, Josie. Hello, Susan Brownie. -o. So we learned that by rote, and then we talk about the 16th, and we talk about the notes we know. So we go through like, um, we talk about the quarter notes, the eighth notes. I ask them like, who knows what this is, and all those kind of things. And then I show them the 16th notes, and we've seen them before, but we haven't learned them super well. And we practice playing 16th notes. And I say, you know, last year we learned a song that had 16 notes in it too. And it was, it went, circle to the left, old brass wagon, circle to the left, old brass wagon, circle to the left, old brass wagon, you're the wind, my darling. And we did that last year a lot. So they like really remembered it. They were like, oh, yeah, circle to the left. Um, and so then we start on our Kid Stick stations. So if you have never heard of Kid Sticks, go buy this book. This is by Artie Almeida, who is one of my absolute favorite curriculum creators, I guess that's what we would call her. Um, this is one of my favorite books. So Kid Sticks is a curriculum where you have kids drumming by using like a coffee can with a little mouse pad on it, sticks, and then also a tambourine. But we didn't use a tambourine yet this week. Um, I wanted to start them on two things and then go from there. Um, and then you can also be on the floor. And it has all of these different songs that you can play the rhythms with. So some of them are folk songs, which is actually why we go over Circle to the Left, because that's one of the songs that's on here. Um, there's also rhythm readiness. So that means, so basically um, the kids listen to the CD play a rhythm and then they play the same thing get back, which really helps us understand like left to right reading and all that kind of stuff and then there are all of these like classical and pop and all sorts of different listening activities you can do with songs so like this is the one we're using this week it's called can can and it goes with the can can and it's playing rhythms along with the songs so for 
Monday, we go over Sir, um, Old Grass Wagon because we already know this song, so it's super, super easy. And then we do Rhythm Readiness number one. We usually do it once, and then I ask them just like, what did you notice in here? Because there's a lot of stuff in here we actually haven't learned yet. But it's okay. Um, and we talk about that, do it a second time, and I check off like how they're doing, if they look totally lost, if they're looking at the screen, those kind of things, um, as an assessment. And then we briefly look at rhythm readiness number two, if there is time. On Tuesday, we go over the song, Hey Ho, Nobody Home. So if you, for some reason, don't know that one, it goes, Hey ho, nobody home. Meat nor drink nor money have I none. Still I will be merry. And that's a hard one because there's a lot of different versions of it. So if you're like, that's not how that song goes. There's a lot of different versions of it. Um, and it's fun, it's in minor, and they enjoy that. So then I put the song up on the screen, and we look at it, and I say, okay, how many pieces does a quarter note get? One. How many pieces does an eighth notes get? Two. All right, two share, one beat. Perfect, so how many do I have total here? Two. Awesome. And we go through and we count through each one. I don't have it in front of me, so I don't remember exactly what it is, but you know, that's kind of the gist. Um, and then we look at this PowerPoint. So it says every rhythm and music takes up space. We call those beats. We review each of these, which we should know all of those. And I say, if we have too many rhythms in a row, it can be really hard to read, kind of like this. I actually skip this and I just show them this one. It makes life easier. And I say, um, so in order to make it easier, we have something called measures. So I split my rhythms up into measures. I know it's a measure because there's these little lines called bar lines. Can you say bar line? Bar lines. Um, and that tells me that the measure is done. So the space in between the bar lines is the measure. This little thing is called a time signature. It tells me how many beats are in a measure. Let's make sure it's right. How many beats do two eighth notes get? Two eighth notes share one beat. Awesome. So that's one. How many beats does a quarter rest get? One. Awesome. So how many do I have total? Two. Awesome. You guys are so smart. Let's see. What about this one? Oh, it's a half note. Oh, it's all by itself. Oh, because it gets two beats all to itself. Oh, look at that. And so we go through that and then we say, and then at the end, we have a double bar line because that's the end. We want to see that it's the end. They usually understand that pretty, pretty well. It's not that complicated. And I tell them the bar lines are kind of like punctuation. It's like having a period or a comma or whatever. Um, we do that briefly and then we go through the next parts of the Mexican hat dance. After that, we look at the song En La Pulga, which is from um, Puerto Rico. So this is a song about someone going to the market of San Jose and buying different instruments. So they start with a guitar and then they do the clarinet and then they do a violin in the version that I have. Um, and so we just go through the words. I teach them the chorus and then I sing it and have them join me with the chorus and play my ukulele. I'm not going to sing it because I don't have the sheet music and I can't quite remember it because it's new to me. Um, and then we pull out some popsicle sticks and we make some rhythms. Oh, I didn't bring enough home. Sorry. Um, I'll see if I can insert a picture of how we do this. So we use popsicle sticks to make rhythms. One is ta, we use three as tt. Um, and I'm really focusing on 16th notes today. And all of my rhythms have 16th notes in them. So I say a rhythm and then have them make them in popsicle sticks next to me and we do both four four and two four because those are the two time signatures we're working on right now and we'll do more later on wednesday we do hey ho nobody's home as a round which is super fun with third grade doing it for the first time go over and la pulga uh, my textbook series actually has a recording so we sing it with the recording the second time um and then we do kid sticks again so we go over rhythm readiness one and two and then we go over the can can and learn as much as we can which is not everything and then we play chicken on a fence post i learned it from make moments matter the podcast which is wonderful if you don't listen to it go find it um this is a duck not a chicken i am aware i don't have a chicken so we're using a duck so basically the kids make two circles concentric circles so one's on the inside one's the outside the inside goes one way around the outside goes the other way around while you sing we do that and then pause i put chicken in the middle and then you have two kids who are the farmers they go close their eyes while they're closing their eyes oh and all the kids are holding hands did i say that 
and I don't say holding hands I say we're gonna make a gate and that usually is fine so they go close their eyes and while they have their eyes closed I pick two fin on the fence line so the kids grabbing hands I will come and tap one partner pair on the outside and one on the inside so I just kind of tap like this and at the end of the song so while you sing the kids rotate around at the end of the song those two people that were those pairs that were tapped so four kids total two on the outside two on the inside that are together they're the only ones who drop hands and they make a gate and the farmers have to run through the gates and get the chicken i hope i explained that kind of okay if you're totally confused like leave it in the comments so farmers are trying to get through the gates there's only one gate on the outside of one gate on the inside those are the kids that i tapped so they're the only ones dropping hands at the end of the game I haven't found too many issues with the holding hands issue for this because it is so much stinking fun <laughs> that they don't really mind. And I kind of explain it beforehand and like draw a map of like the concentric circles especially. And that really helped. After that, we watch a video of Hispanic dancing just to kind of like bring us back down to earth. Then on Thursday, we do centers. Centers actually goes pretty well with third grade. I'm usually pretty content. So three different things. So the kids get a whole bunch of these little pencil rhythms. These are available in my TPT shop. I also have Soulfish ones if you're interested in that. And then two, like two different time signatures. So they pick a time signature and then they build a rhythm. Is it backwards? when you see this, I don't know. Um, and then they build a rhythm in that time signature. And at the end of the measure, they use a popsicle stick as a bar line. So the whole point is making sure we have two beats in a measure or four beats in a measure. So then I have a composition activity where they are writing rhythms in two, four, four, four. And y'all, I was like, oh, let's add some three, four. And then I didn't add an extra like thing for the beat. And then I made this one three, four. And I, so I totally messed this up. They did really well anyway. And I have like 5,000 copies. So I'm pretty much going to tell them to like do whatever you want there. Um, but they're just composing in two, four and four, four and three, four. Easy, easy peasy. Um, that's again, an assessment. That's one of my like benchmark things that I'm looking at. And then my other station is doing the kid sticks. So I copied on in the book. It said, if you own it, then you may copy it for classroom purposes only. So I copied the ones we worked on. So old brass wagon and rhythm readiness and the can can. And then the second rhythm readiness. And I put them in these folders and put numbers on them. And based on how the kids have been doing this week and how well I know they know rhythm, I give them a different one to start with. So the kids who are kind of struggling, I give the first one, if they're kind of getting it, the second one, if they're really getting it, the third, and they work on that and practice it on their own. When they finish with that one, they may come and choose one of their own and I don't care which one they get. This is also an opportunity for some kids, I have a couple kids who are like, don't know anything about music and so for those kids i'm pulling them we're working through some together so we can talk about oh this is a quarter note oh these are eighth notes because i just i don't know why i have like five kids maybe in all of third grade that are like i just know like one and then a couple who are struggling generally on friday their activity is actually exactly the same as fourth and fifth so i am not going to talk about that so moving on to second grade second grade comes in and we do a really simple activity for movement. So I play my drum and I play eight beats and then eight beats of silent, eight beats, eight beats of silent, and they just keep the beat in their feet. And I get like faster and slower and we throw out um, presto and adagio so that we can kind of remember those words. And then we go over the song Tango Tango Tango, which is really super fun. Um, and for today, I just have them learn the words so this song is really cute it goes tingle tres ovejas tu tienes ninguna estas las mantengo en una cabana una me da leche otra me da lana otra me mantiene toda la semana so we learned that song, we learned just the words, and then I have them play the rhythm while I sing so that they can get used to hearing it. 
After that, we pull out some salsa music. So we listen to El Manicero and we dance a salsa. Um, we just do, it's basically like a two step that I've been doing with them. And then after that, we talk about the clave pattern and play the clave. So the clave pattern in a lot of salsa is And we talk about how we can remember that by using different words and we come up with different words that go along with it. Um, the one in the curriculum that I learned this from did um, bistec chuleta, bistec chuleta. I like um, cookies, chocolate, cookies, chocolate. And we come up with different two and three syllable words to go along with that. Um, and then, and so we just do that really briefly and then we read the book Celia Cruz, a queen of salsa, which is super, super fun. I have not had a chance to finish it actually with either class, um, but it's the story of Celia Cruz, who is a famous, famous salsa musician and her life. And it's a true story and it's just really cute. The illustrations are beautiful, really super great. Highly recommend it. Um, after that, we get back up and do um, some dancing to the salsa sorry we do clavis then we do dancing then we come back to let's figure out some words and come up with different two and three word two and three syllable words and then we pick one and write it down draw a little picture in the little boxes and there we go um on tuesday we do the drum activity but this time if if the kids are not crazy then we move around the room while we do it we go back over tango 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 we talk about the rhythm and then really we talk about the solfege of the first part because it does go down to re and that's not helpful for me so we're working on me and so so we i show them and say this is the same one for the whole thing oh did i tell you this is from argentina yeah so we also look and say look this is argentina this is us anyway so we look at that on the staff. And then we pull out our little two line staves. These are from my cuckoo lesson. And then we get little mini erasers or with my really destructive kids, bingo chips. Um, and we practice making sew and me patterns on here with a huge emphasis on going across the page because I'm having a really hard time with them putting them on top of each other. So like this. And every time I ask them, which one comes first? And they're like, oh, so does. I'm like, okay, then me needs to scoot over so I know which one comes first. We're struggling with that, struggling with that, but we're, we're gonna get it. I'm gonna do some remediation next time. It'll be fine. Um, after that, we briefly learned um, the song Lucy Lockett, which we're gonna play a game with later on. So the song goes, Lucy Lockett lost her pocket, Katie Fisher found it. Not a penny was there in it, only ribbon round it. Um, very briefly, and then we play freeze dance with the salsa music because they just need to wiggle because I've now had them sitting way too long. On Wednesday, we go over some spirituals. We do a program called Musical Explorers where our kids learn about three different kinds of music in the fall and three different kinds in the spring and then they get to go to a concert. So we're learning about spirituals. We listen to the song, This Train is Bound for Glory and keep the steady beat. Um, the recording I have goes from like moderately fast to really slow and then fast again. So it's really great to kind of get their wiggles out. They love it. And then I have them sit down close their eyes and listen to the song Follow the Drinking Gourd, which is like one of my absolute favorites, not gonna lie. And I have them just listen. And after getting all those wiggles out, we don't have any problems. I say, just close your eyes. If you wanna move your head or your hands a little bit, that's fine, but we're not like getting out of our dots. And then we talk about, you know, how did it sound? Did it sound happy? Did it sound sad? Like what music words can we use to describe it? Um, after that, we go over the song Baba Black Sheep because it has half notes and we are prepping our half notes and we want to get us singing. And then we go over Lucy Lockett again and I have little rhythm cards that I show them to remind them. Um, and then we play the game. So Lucy Lockett, the game is like um, Duck Duck Goose, but the kid who is it, you walk around while you sing and the kid who's it drops something in the hands of someone behind. So you put your hands behind your back like this. And then when the song stops, they drop something in their hands, the pocket that got lost. And then 
walk around the circle back to that person's spot again if the um, person who had it is chasing them around I assume you know how to play duck duck goose so we're not gonna go super into that on Thursday we go over the song he's got the whole world in our in his hands because it's a spiritual and it has half notes and so we really emphasize he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole world and a lot of my kids actually knew this one which was really super fun so they were able to just be like yeah and they like gave me ideas for verses and just like a quick and had them just moving around really quickly getting stuff out then we did some modified centers that made me want to lose my mind but we were okay we we did it it was fine we're we're gonna get it so I had everybody working on so in me practice so they had this where they had to identify the notes by coloring and then write the letters underneath and then create their own here my class last week actually did really well almost everybody got like most of this right really struggled with this which is fine we'll get it next time when they finish that then i have a little color by pattern so just different sew and me patterns that they can color um this is a picture of scott joplin actually um and color that him once they are finished while they are doing that i call up a small group based on our um, assessment from when I had them putting the um, erasers onto the staff and we do basically that same thing so I have them with a the staff I have them with either bingo chips or erasers and then depending on the level with the um, lowest level I had the cards and we're like we would sing and then we would all put them on together and I kind of walk them through it with the middle level we would kind of walk through the first one and they do the rest with the upper level I said all right Put these patterns on your staff and they're like okay and so you know um so we would line them up and have them match and put the notes here 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 like so 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 me and then they go to the next one i said once you do three then you can go back to your coloring sheet and that provided another assessment also differentiation because i was walking the young the lower students through it making the older kids figure it out or the higher students figure it out by themselves and i was able to check off okay this is what's happening and figure out individual struggles like okay this person understands this concept but not this concept and that was helpful too On friday we went over this train is bound for glory and we made a little train um and walked around in a circle i was originally gonna have them move around this classroom but I just didn't trust them that much so we went around in a circle and um showed all the different tempos tempi tempos I don't know um and then and then we learned the chorus to follow the drinking gourd and talk about how it is a code so if you don't know the song follow the drinking gourd it is a code from the underground railroad where they were basically giving directions to free the slaves so it says follow the drinking gourd which meant that the slaves could follow the Big Dipper because the Big Dipper has the North Star in it, or I think it's Big Dipper, because the Big Dipper has the North Star in it so they could follow that north until they get to freedom. Um, and so there's lots of stuff in there, like it talks about the first quail calls, which is springtime, and so we talk about a couple of those, sing through it, they love that song. Um, once that is finished, if there's time, then, I have a bunch of these glockenspiels and I put me and so on them and we got a mallet for partners so I gave every two kids one and they got those same cards that we used the other day and they played them on the glockenspiel so they can get used to that transfer and then we played Lucy Lockett for our game time if we earned it if we didn't earn it we probably had stuff that we had not finished yet so that's how that goes all right last one um first grade is working on high and low on the staff so again differentiating because my second grade did a lot of the same activities but they were working on so and me they're working on high and low and then reviewing ta and tt so they did the same drum activity and then they started working on the beat to this train is bound for glory listening to follow the drinking gourd and then we totally switched gears and went over the Tango 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 song. And then we played the rhythm with the maracas. So I gave 
and we went over it like three times because it took that many times to get everyone a chance to play. Um, and then we looked at the song called El Coqui, which is super fun. It's about a frog and the sound that the frog makes and it is super, super, super cute. And I even found a, and I found a recording of it from Dora and the kids just like really loved that. So we listened to Dora sing and sang along with her and I was like, great. On Tuesday, we did the activity, um, Hi, My Name is Joe, which again, I was listening to Make Moments Matters podcast and he was like, I hate this, but I had already planned to do it. And I was like, well, I like it, so it doesn't matter. Um, so this goes, hi, my name is Joe and I work in a button factory. I've got a wife and a dog and a family. One day, my boss came up to me. He said, hi, Joe, are you busy? I said, no, sir. He said, turn the button with your right hand. So we got to keep the beat in our right hand and then we say it again. And then we had a left hand and then we do right foot and left foot and then we do our head and then we do our shoulders which is really hard and fun and then we do our tongue which is their favorite of course um and then uh and the last time we always say um my boss came up to me he said hi sir are you busy i said yes although we're doing it with our tongue so it's like uh -huh. and i said what did joe say and they're like he said do anything else um really super simple and cute we go over tango 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 and we talk about the rhythm and review that then we do popsicle stick rhythms also and we just do ta and titi and then we go over el coqui as i pick everything up which is why it's really nice to have that if we have extra time i want to play it on the guiros but we have not had extra time last week so we'll see how tomorrow goes on Wednesday, we go over um, This Train is Bound for Glory, and then we do Lucy Lockett, and we read our Ta and Tiji rhythms that go along with it. This is in my Lucy Lockett pack on TPT. And then we, and while we do that, we show the contour on our bodies. So, so, La, and me, I don't call them that, but we're just, you know, getting used to that. And then I'm like, awesome, I'm gonna go to the keyboards and I'm gonna play, and if I play high, put your hands up high just like how we had them on our head and if I play low can you put them down on the ground and so that's just a quick review they should all know high and low and be able to respond but just in case just making sure so that is also an assessment there we go um after that I say awesome now we're gonna listen to a song and see if we can show the high and low so take your finger and we're gonna draw or paint along with it and we listen to O Mio Babino Caro which I love. It is an opera aria in Italian, but it is just gorgeous and really great for this because you don't want the kids singing it. It goes to a high A flat, but it's really gorgeous and it has really dramatic like octave jumps. And so it's really great for high and low because you can be really dramatic about going way up high and like just the range is really crazy and it does like really sweeping motion up and down and it's just like perfect. And they thought it was great. Um, after that, we pulled out our So and Me cards and we just did patterns and pointed at So and Me <laughs> on our patterns to get used to it. And then we go over Los Pollitos. So I pull out, um, so I sing the song Los Pollitos. If you don't know that one, it is, I think, a Mexican folk song. It's like a nursery rhyme, basically. And it goes, Los pollitos. Oh, I'll show you my super cool actions that we do along. I'm like, just do the actions that I'm gonna sing. Los pollitos dicen pio 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 cuando tienen hambre, cuando tienen frío. Sorry. La gallina busca el maíz el trigo, la estela comida y la espresa abrigo. Bajo sus dos almas, a correr chavitos, tuermen los pollitos, hasta otra día. And so then we go through and like, you know, okay, so if I did this, what do you think they're doing on that part? If I did this, what do you think they're doing? And just kind of getting them to use their brain to think like, okay, I saw that, that must mean that. Um, and then I pull out this book, which is super cute. This is like my favorite find, y'all. I'm so excited about this. Um, and it's 
Los Pollitos, it's in Spanish and English, which is great. And it is a flip up book. So we go over it and I just sing one part at a time. So I go, Los Pollitos dicen, and then I'm like, where are the chickens? <gasps> there they are, look. Pio, pio, pio. And we can go through and it's just super cute. Cuando tienen hambre, cuando tienen frío, la gallina busca el maíz al trigo. Les den la comida y las presta abrigo. Bajo sus salvas acorruchaditos, duermen los pollitos hasta otra día. And they just think that is super cute. So the little chickens are like hopping out of everything and it's just adorable. Um, and then there's also a video, actually a bunch of my kids knew this because there's a video on Nick Jr. of this song. So they were like, I've heard this before on Nickelodeon. I was like, awesome. Um, and so there is a video that if I have extra time, I am planning to show them. I have not had extra time yet. Um, then on Thursday, we do the drumming around the room and then we read the book drum dream girl so this is like my super exciting new find i just i was like i need one book for this day and i went to the library and this just happened to be there i was like looking for something hispanic and possibly music this was just sitting on the shelf and i was like oh my gosh could it be more perfect so this is the real story about um a lady named mio castro zadari Aga, Zaldariaga, I think that's correct, um, who is a salsa drummer from Cuba. But they used to not let girls drum in Cuba. So this is really great because it talks about that and breaking barriers and it says, you know, both boys and girls are free to dream and do whatever they want and all those super cute things. Um, when I found this book, I was so inspired. I went and wrote a whole TBT product and lesson that goes along with it. I am not using it because I had already decided on all of my lessons before that. I just again needed one little thing to stick in there, but I am leaving it for a sub. So that is this. I wanted to show it to you really quickly. And it is just all sorts of things that go along with the book. So it talks about, um, this is just like more information and the kids can color the drum. And then it has on the map where Cuba is, some comprehension questions. And then um, it talks about her dream. What's something you dream about? And they can write, I dream of Jeannie. Just kidding. Um, and then there's more of a like written response for slightly older students. A really written response for older students. Um, and then they can color the bongos in. Um, this has all different kinds of drums that they can color in and it says the names of them and Then here they're writing the names of the drums underneath them and they can color them again and then um, in the book they talk about having Creating their own music. So I have rhythm and melody things where they can create their own music So yeah, I'm gonna leave some of that for my sub that I'm gonna have next week, but I haven't used them yet this week after that we pull out some drums. I said, oh, we're gonna drum just like Neil, um, just like the drum dream girl. And so we just go through each of our songs and drumming on our hand drums. And this is something I really like to do to kind of like wrap up the week. And then once that is finished, they fill out this little thing that says, my favorite song we sang this week in music was, I liked it because, the end. Because if you haven't heard, we're doing writing cross curriculum, so I'm trying to incorporate more writing. I actually did a really terrible job incorporating writing this week, but I have been more on it, so next week should be a little, or next time should be a little bit better. Um, but fill that out so that we have our writing and they can do it. Because at first grade, I was like, what can first grade write? I don't know. So we're gonna try that. On Friday, we do this train around in a circle. Listen and learn, follow the drinking board. Um, and then we do high and low on the cards with our manipulatives and then we play Lucy Lockett and then we are done. If you're still with me, thank you so much for sticking around. I know it's hard. I know it's a lot, but I really want to go in depth into all the like nitty gritty things that are harder to talk about. Like it's great to be like, oh yeah, we use this song or oh yeah, we use this book but I like to talk more about like how. If you enjoy this, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share. 
If you are interested in anything on here, I will link anything available down below. If you're interested in something that is not available down below, leave me a comment to let me know and I will make it available. Most of these things I'm like planning to put up on TBT, but I haven't gotten that far yet because I just started teaching these lessons. So if you are wanting something, let me know and I will move it to the top of the priority list. I hope these are helpful. If you have any like, please make sure that if you like this, you like, subscribe, and share, and have a wonderful week.